very much that you could stop by and providing clarity. 200% is the year-to-date return on Musgaon Talk. So it's just a, a complete astounding performance uh, on the defense uh, space. Now, Bajaj Consumer is the next company that we're we'll uh, going to be speaking with. Uh, the quarter was a week one, and we have uh, the management now uh, joining us to uh, take us through. Uh, what the future holds. Jaydeep Nandi is Managing Director at Pajaj Consumer Care. Jaydeep, good to have you with us here. Good, uh, good morning. Uh, Hi, good morning. So both uh, gross margins and EBITDA margins have come in at uh, pretty much historic lows for you. Uh, could you give us some sense of uh, how Q3 is uh, uh, panning out and uh, what are the factors at play? So two things at this stage. So as you see the uh, markets, mainly for the discretionary in FMCG, have been uh, weak for quite some time now. Rural is under stress. So as a company, we have decided to, uh, rather than just remain with almond drops, expand our portfolio. As far as that part is concerned, I think we are tracking pretty well. Uh, the company half year is at a value growth of uh, around 11% uh, uh, and a volume growth about close to 10%. While the heralds market as such, if you look at in the quarter, was down by 5.5%. In heralds itself, our volume growth has been 6.4%, value growth of 7%. So that's what we are doing. If you look at our uh, portfolio from a 4% uh, new products portfolio that we had last year, we have gone up to about 12% this year. So that's what we are doing on one stage as far as top line is concerned. Mm. As far as the bottom line is concerned, you are absolutely right. Uh, the, LLPs, uh, the LLP is absolutely at its historic high. It is showing some signs of corrections. We have seen some price decrease as far as the LLP is concerned, so we feel that that would help ease pressure on the uh, gross margin. But yes, we will uh, we will still have to track that because both of both RMO and LLP compared to two years back, as it are at much higher prices. Mm. So this hair oil market, right? I mean, you spoke about how the industry was down about five percent, and you did about six and a half percent, six point four percent growth. Uh, do you think there could be some more pressure in the second half of the year, particularly on? Uh, for the industry? Well, if you see the rural markets also is uh, quite divided. If you look at the markets of UP, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, that part, the rural markets are a little more stressed than possibly the markets of Punjab, Haryana, Maharashtra. So we feel that slowly the recovery is showing some signs with the near monsoon. We expect the, we are cautiously optimistic that will uh, bounce back. On the other side, if you look at the alternate channels, modern trade e-commerce have been growing phenomenally. For FMCG itself, as well as for us, we have grown exceedingly well. We had a 77% growth in modern trade, uh, more than tripling our sales as far as e-commerce is concerned. Both of these portfolios now, both of these businesses now contributed over 9% each to our turnover, which was um, hardly about less than a percent two years back as far as e-commerce was concerned. Mm -hmm. So we feel that the urban is still doing well. We have been able to, to clock in a double-digit growth, even in general trade in urban so. Urban is uh, doing well. Rural is where we expect the recovery to come back. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Nandi, good morning. Uh, you give us a couple of numbers, uh, new products. I think they've gone to 12%. What's the target out here? And if you could give us a timeline. And you're saying that RMO, that's refined mustard oil prices, have cooled off a little bit and a couple of other input costs have cooled off. So can we expect margin recovery from this 13.5-14% that we're seeing? If yes, by how many basis points? So what we, are, we are, what we are planning to do, if you look at our advertising spends, we have significantly upped it. We are now at over 18% as far as our advertising spends is concerned. Because what we have decided as an organization is beyond almond drops, we need to expand our portfolio, so dairy scarcity, and that is tracking pretty well. So we launched two products, Coco Onion and Bajaj Coco Onion, as well as almond drop soaps, which is a part of a larger almond drop extension portfolio. The, those are tracking well as well as we have our Amla portfolio and Coconut, which are also doing well. So our advertising spends will remain high, and we expect our EBITDA margins to, yes, say, correct a bit, but not significantly correct, because our investments will be a, a little there for the midterm, while we expect the corrections to happen for a two, three years. 18% of sales on advertising, uh, Jerry, that's what you're saying, right? Yes, so okay. advertising, advertising ratio to say. You know, you said uh, that you began by saying you're expanding beyond almond drops, right? Uh, is yes. that basically lower uh, products at lower price points? I mean, just tying that so, with, uh, in with the rural stress that you spoke about. So it's a, it's a combination of both. So one is on the uh, completion of our hair oils portfolio itself. 
So you have the almond drops portfolio. We have now the entire cocoa portfolio, coconut portfolio, which is the coconut, pure coconut, as well as the cocoa onion, which is a value-added coconut. We have also the amla portfolio that we have launched. On the other side, we have the almond drop extensions, which is going beyond uh, beyond oils into other other categories in the person care space. So those are products which are not always of low value. Some of them will be very premium. Our soap is premium. We also plan to launch a few more products in the coming financial year, next financial year, which will also be premium. As well as our D2C brands, both Native Soul and 100% Pure are uh, far more premium than almond drops. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. By the way, we are just heading into two new listings, BKG Foods and Global Health. Uh, the pre-listing